put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. Avengers in 3D Mood Review. The Tesseract, this powerful seemingly limitless source of energy that was established in some of the setup movies for the Avengers is suddenly activated although S.H.I.E.L.D. can't quite tell why and it opens a portal not a big one but big enough to let Loki through and he's carrying a scepter that seems to let him take control of other people, make them his slaves. And despite S.H.I.E.L.D.'s best efforts, Loki escapes with the Tesseract. And how else to stop him from unleashing an army of from space. The Arcturians? The Chihuahuas? There's a A, a U, and a, and a C in the name. I, I don't remember. I'm gonna call them the Chihuahuas. A fierce force. And yes, so how else to stop that than assemble Avengers? I'm going to try not to fawn over this film, but it's going to be hard because it's an amazing film. It completely lives up to the hype. Okay, I'm going to try to break down exactly why this movie succeeds on every level. Because just hearing me talk about how amazing it is isn't going to be very interesting. A huge part of it is the balance. This movie has excellent action. Plenty of it, and it's very big. It's got really compelling drama. It's got comedy. I, I swear, there were like three times. I watched this, you know, opening night, packed theater. Three times, just the crowd roared with laughter. And I, I suspect that will, you know, happen pretty much every premiere. And, you know, the acting is phenomenal, the casting is phenomenal, the effects are excellent. You know, it's... A lot of these films with, you know, a lot of characters, a lot of superhero characters fail because there is not enough room for all the characters. Case in point, the X-Men series. This... It benefits from having films setting it up. So, you know, the, the basic character traits and some of the interpersonal conflicts have been set up. The ground has been laid. But that doesn't mean that this just goes in and expects you to... It still, you know, establishes who these people are. I wouldn't recommend going into Avengers without having seen at least some of the other films. And it certainly won't have the same impact if you do. But... The film can basically stand on its own, you know, and it does go in and, you know, actually have time for all of these different, you know, characters. You know, the, I mean, sure, the four main characters have already had an entire movie. One of them had two. And one of them was good, you know, to set them up, but there's still, you know, they you still need for them to have something interesting. I mean, the 
One of the critical things about this movie is that no one should walk away and be able to say out loud that one character, you know, that, that one of the heroes didn't really need to be in this movie, or they didn't really do anything, or I didn't really feel like, you know, like they, they did something that just really, you know, that was crucial. That should not be possible. And I would say it isn't with this. It just, all of them have something to do. All of them have this, you know, personal conflict. And all of them have, you know, all of them have these great heroic moments as well, where they do something that only they could do. There are situations where only that hero could have solved that situation. And all of them have great introductions as well. You know, every heroic character in this has a great introduction. That goes for Nick Fury as well. I'm, I, I really don't want to give any of them away, but yeah, just, you know, the first time you see any of the characters, the, yeah. Now, the, getting into some more specifics, excuse me, excuse me, basically, you know, you have stuff like Tony is, you know, this this was an issue with the his movies. He basically just undid the damage he'd already done. In this, they kind of they actually address that. They go in, you know, there's really there's a line. Another character challenges him and says, you know, do do you actually? It's it's all about you. You know, do you ever do anything completely selfless? Is it ever really, you know, you know? And yeah, so he has to deal with that. Thor, he finds it's Loki again. This is the second time that Loki is causing a lot of, you know, destruction on Earth. And it, he is Thor's brother, so there is that, you know, I, th this is my people's fault. You know, he's got to carry that around. Banner, I shouldn't have to tell you. <laughs> Banner is feeling kind of bad about the whole, you know, destructive alter ego thing. You know, it just, and I don't know, Captain America. I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it'll come to me. I, th I think there was something for him as well. And you know, all four of them. Well, you know, six of them, I suppose, counting Hawkeye and Black Widow. You know, all of them do what they do best and get to you know make a difference in the course of the film because of their strength you know so Captain America he is a leader and he is a soldier the movie makes you believe that you know Tony he you know he makes these really daring maneuvers but he's still somewhat smart about them you know he he takes I'm not sure calculated risk is really the but you know yeah, anyone who saw Iron Man 1 and 2, you know, he he does what it takes to really, you know, make a difference. And he really does put himself in the line of fire. You know, Hulk, he's a, he's a brute. And brute force can be really important sometimes. And Thor, you know, he has that... Well, again, I'll, you know, some brute force, but also, you know, he he actually makes a bit of a difference in, you know, the, he already, he knows Loki, and the two can, you know, yeah, there's, they, they make good use of that. Black Widow is sort of, I don't know, the smart one, you know, she's, she's the one who really thinks is, the, what, it, what is really going on here, and how could we best, you know, address it, she, she's the spy, she's, she's the brains. And Hawkeye is the guy who really, you know, he can assess the situation and really, you know, get a good overview. I mean, he, the guy's a sniper, you know. And or he makes plenty of use of those customized arrows, you know. The... Now, one important thing about the film, of course, is... Yes, these guys have had separate films, and we know what they can do by themselves, but... 
it's already, you know, you have this alien invasion, so of course they need to be a team in order to actually defeat it. But these are four very different people, and two of them have huge egos. So, you really need to establish how are these guys going to work together. And yes, for a while, they do not work together. They work against each other. And it's very... It's a very volatile situation for a while, and over the course of it, they grow into a team, and the film handles this beautifully, you know, and you have all this great interpersonal conflict, you know, because there is this you know, massive difference in how they view the world and how they go about things, you know. And we also have these four very different, I mean, the four movies are fairly different movies, and this actually makes, you know, somehow this fits all four styles into one movie. You know, there's, there's room for Hulk smashing, there's room for the sibling, you know, the, the sort of Shakespearean sibling rivalry kind of thing between Thor and Loki. And his god, godlike powers, you know, there's room for Captain America and his, you know, soldiering. And there's room for Tony Stark and his Iron Man, you know, these, yeah, insane risks and him flying around. And this, Iron Man 2 messed up the flying, I talk about that in my review of that. This one did it about as well as Iron Man 1. By the way, this is... A, Superior film to Iron Man 1. I love Iron Man 1, but this is better. This, you know, what little Iron Man 1 didn't get completely right, this one does get completely right. But yeah, the, the flying, amazing. The 3D, incredibly immersive and very well used because it kind of... There are a few times, you know, the, in the beginning, when Loki, you know, God created the heavens and... When Loki comes out, he's pointing this scepter and he's basically pointing it straight at the audience and he is just... Extremely scary, you know, just it's very threatening, and the film does that. Then there, you know, later on, there's like maybe a building will be collapsing, and this big chunk of debris will be falling straight at you, and stuff like that. So occasionally they do throw stuff at you, but mostly this has somewhat of the Avatar effect, is you know, to a lesser extent, with just putting you in the world, putting you in the vicinity of these characters and their conflict. The film does something very wise in not letting Banner Hulk out for a while. In fact, he is not brought onto the team as the Hulk. He's brought on for his expertise in the field of gamma radiation because the Tesseract gives off very faint gamma radiation. He's the one, he's the scientist who knows the most about it. So he's brought on for his science, you know, his scientific expertise and he makes good use of that, and that's also excellent because you, you gotta remember he's more than this big hulking, you know, mass of brawn. You know, he he is a very smart guy, and yeah, they go in and actually use that. He makes a huge difference for the success of the mission. The shield helicarrier is in this movie, and it is glorious. And again, and that actually gets a really cool intro as well, you know, the, the introductory shots of the helicarrier are just, you know, epic as that. Now, the action, there is a lot of it, and I'd say it gets to be huge, but thinking about it, it starts out quite big, and somehow they, you know... I gotta give props to Joss Whedon and I think Zach Penn co-wrote it with him. You know, Zach Whedon for Joss Whedon for both directing and writing. The guy knows how to space out action and drama. Because there I mean there is a massive amount of action in this. And yet you're not exhausted by the end of it. You know, I, I've seen films with much less action or much less epic action, much less grand action, that left the audience exhausted by the film, you know. This does a perfect job of spacing it out. And don't get me wrong, 
the excuse me the ending the the climax is amazing it is just i i have no words it is just huge and all six members make a great difference in that battle you know and you have there's there's this shot that i i think when you know when they started to even develop this project someone put his foot down vetoed this shot will be in the movie i don't care what you have to do this shot needs to be in the movie in the climax of the film there needs to be one continuous shot tracking shot that shows all six of them making a difference in the battle. You know, all six of them engage in the fight and clearly they are really, you know, just kicking ass and taking names. This, these are the Avengers. You know, this is what you have to look up to. This, these are heroes, you know. The, the dialogue is just I am struggling to find one line in this that is not golden and quotable. The, you know, remember how in Iron Man 1 and to a lesser extent Iron Man 2, there is this great banter between Tony and Pepper Potts and, well, and all the characters in Iron Man. They have that here. I mean, it's mainly in this one, I'd say it's mainly between... You know, Pepper Potts is then this a little bit, and yes, they are now together. And that's not a spoil. You find that out the moment you see Tony, and you actually have it. it there is some banter between him and the rest of the team, and in general, just you know, when he speaks, he banter's. You know, he he says funny stuff, but in general, you just have these great exchanges between the different team members where it's just <laughs> it's these completely different sort of cultural you know without spoiling anything there's this scene where the team is all together and you know you have Tony Stark and Banner talking about science and they're like you know I, I think it's Tony who says like yo yeah, finally someone who speaks my you know someone who speaks English and Captain America is like is that what they were doing and just the you know and and it goes on a little bit like that with you know these different lines that just I, I can't believe I, I I refuse to spoil them watch the movie and find out it's just it's hilarious you know Sam Jackson he kicks so much ass. He doesn't even need the R rating. He doesn't even need the swears. I mean, I'm not saying that I blame those who love the swears. I, I do as well. But he is just so badass. You know, it just... And the... The, the film actually doesn't have that much of a supporting cast, I'd say. It's really mainly the, you know, the, the main characters. You do, you know, you have like six or seven of them, so... It is essentially enough. As far as supporting cast, you know, you have a little bit of Pepper Potts, and then you have this, there's this agent that's introduced in this movie. I'm almost certain we haven't seen her before. Agent Hill. She is awesome. She kicks ass, you know, seriously. And Phil Coulson returns, you know, Agent Phil Coulson, who's been in, you know, several of these, you know, the, of the setup films. And he's just as much fun as before, and just, yeah, he, he has a great part in it, actually. The pacing is amazing. This movie is two and a half hours long. It does not feel anywhere near that. You know, I, I talk about how, you know, Iron Man 1 has a really great pace. This has an even better pace. I, you know, it just, it's... It moves fast when it needs to. It it takes a breath when it needs to. It just again, in spite of how much action there is, in spite of how huge this movie gets, you are not overwhelmed, and you don't feel like there is no point where this movie gets tedious. There is no point where it 
just, you know, exhaust you. And that, I, just considering how much goes on in that final fight, I am amazed that it, it didn't exhaust, you know. And the, the final, the climactic battle, actually, without giving anything away, there are like, you know, there are developments to it. It's not just... Directors who do bad action scenes need to study this movie, because this gets it right. You don't have action just as this, you know, mindless distraction. You can. If you don't want, if, if that's what you want to strive for, sure, go ahead. Meanwhile, this is filmmaking. This is creating something. This movie, in years, in decades, people will still remember this movie. People can still watch this movie in decades and see, you know what, this is a great movie. You know, and again, even without having seen the other movies, although again, it does help. It just, you know, it really, there's, in fact, I'm... Not just action scenes, I can't think of a single scene in this movie that is, you know, unnecessary at all. I need to mention that this has, you know, you, you have six, seven, you, you have a good amount of, you know, yeah, let's go with seven. You have seven, you know, beings who, you know, have a lot of power in one way or the other. There are going to be fans who want to see some of them square off against each other, even though they might be on the same side. And, you know, no one can blame them. And evidently, excuse me, the production team for this did not blame them either, because, yes, before they actually, excuse me, get excuse me, get into the team spirit, there is infighting, and it is glorious. Yes, I, I'm not going to give away. I, I just, I, what I will say is that pretty much every matchup, every, you know, one-on-one -on -one fight that you want to see in this movie, you see in this movie. The trailers are a mere preview, trust me. And yes, the awesome might of Thor's hammer, Hulk's fist, and the the protective force of the Captain America shield are very well exploited indeed. And Tony and his armor just keep those words in mind when you watch this movie. Tony and his armor. That's that's all I'm gonna say. I quite like that this time they actually made the Hulk look like <laughs> the actor playing the Hulk. You know, when you, when you see when you look at his face, you know, you can tell this even in the trailer. That Hulk looks like Mark Ruffalo. And it's just and by the way, the recasting beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I didn't really think that Mark Ruffalo was like, you know, I, I don't know, it just... I don't have a problem with him. He just doesn't really strike me as, oh, well, that's obviously Bruce Banner. I was really wrong. He is Bruce Banner. Norton, go rewrite another movie. This... This role is Mark Ruffalo's. And it, it needs to stay Mark Ruffalo's. He does fantastic. He makes the role his own. As the as Banner, he has this really sort of non-confrontational, you know, very anxious kind of, you know, I don't know, the, the just the edge, I guess. It, you know, you can really tell this guy is carrying a lot, around a lot of rage and he really does not want to unleash it. And they really, they really build up the Hulk transformation. And yeah, there, there's, and, and you just, you can tell that there are these really great, there, there are these moments where you really fear, oh crap, 
he's gonna turn he's gonna turn into the Hulk now and just you know it's great build up great build up this makes really good use of you know the the sort of the the setup of the you know five movies you know pretty much well you know there there are obviously some things that could be Asgard is not really in this movie and the what's it called obviously Captain America's environment isn't really either because he's you know now 60 years past that point but other than that you know you do have the you know you know Tony Stark especially his sort of you know you see the Stark Tower and and it's actually you know it, it's not just there as background it's you know, I, I shouldn't give any more away than that Jeremy Renner as Hawkeye you know this is really the first time you can really judge him because you know he didn't really appear very much in, you know, that tease that he, you know, the, the tease of a cameo that he made. He does really great. I mean, one thing that Hawkeye needs is to be intense. And Jeremy Renner is intense. You know, he just, he looks like he could just, you know, rip your face off at any moment, just, you know, just like that, and, yeah, he, he does really well, and he has that sort of slightly dark edge to him that really, you know, that, that the character needs, you know, he's, he's not, uh, that, he's not a um, nice guy, and, you know, Johansson does great again as, you know, Black Widow, and this time they actually go into her character, you know, she... She didn't need to be an Iron Man too, but this one you actually get into. You know, she actually I mentioned her before when I mentioned the others. She actually has this. You know, she has this past. She, you know, she did some things for the wrong people. You know, against the wrong people. She, you know, she she's a killer and a spy, and some of what she did before yeah she and and so she has this this guilty conscience and because of that she's very motivated to help you know heck nick fury even has some you know some baggage or something you know just which i won't give away because it's actually a plot point and it would be a spoiler for me to give away exactly what's going on there but you know it's not a spoiler to say that there is something, though, because you can tell that from, you know, pretty early on. I, you know, Tony Stark, Liam Helmsworth, and... Darn it. The guy who plays Captain America. I actually like the guy, I don't know why I can't remember. Evans, Chris Evans. They're they're fantastic. Again, you know, I mean they, they already you already knew that they were gonna do great. I mean you already saw them in one movie, two for one of them, doing great in their titular character role. And in this, they bring all of that talent and all of that understanding of the character. You know yeah, it's it's really great, you know. And I should also say, in addition to all of them having a heroic moment, there's also at least one bit for each character where you are sure that they are a goner. You know, you're just sitting there, how, how, how is he going to make it out of that? You know, and just excellent. It the, the film has a couple of different locations. You know, they've got the helicarrier got I'm not sure how much I should give away really but 
yeah, you have a few different locations, you know, big cities. Well, you know, you already know that there's going to be at least one big city in, you know, from, from the trailer. And I suppose that actually pretty well covers it, so... Excuse me. Oh, and stay after the credits. Do yourself a favor. I've reviewed other parts of this series. The links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.